If sexual diversity is natural, how can it be threatening? Why does it incite such hatred? In 1996, psychologists from the University of Georgia devised an experiment to test something that had long been suspected but never confirmed. From the pool of undergraduates, they selected 64 young men who all identified as heterosexuals who had never experienced a homosexual thought or fantasy, let alone a sexual act. One by one, they were invited to take part in a laboratory experiment. What they didn't know was that they had already been divided into two groups on the basis of answers to a questionnaire. The homophobes and those who were relaxed about other people's sexuality. The lab had been set up for a screening of homoerotic videos, and on arrival, the volunteers were introduced to a little gadget which would measure sexual arousal. We use penile plethysmography, and I have an example of the strain gauge here. This loop uh, goes around the penis, and as the penis becomes engorged with blood and it becomes erect, it stretches, and we're able to detect those differences in length of the circumference of the gauge. Okay, what I need for you to do is pay attention to the video that we're going to present to you. Then, after it's over, I'm going to ask you two questions. On a scale of 0 to 10, how much did that turn you on? And then, on a scale of 0 to 10, how much of an erection did you get to that video? Do you have any questions? Okay, we're ready to begin. A significant proportion of the homophobic men demonstrated what we call significant levels of arousal, more than 12 millimeters of mercury increase on the strain gauge to the male homosexual video. The non-homophobic group, the overwhelming majority of these individuals had no sexual arousal to the male homosexual video. Here was confirmation those who are outraged by sexual deviation are often fighting something within themselves. In this particular experiment, the extent of the denial was further underlined by answers given to the question, how much did that video turn you on? Although all participants were sitting there with their pants down and the evidence before their eyes, almost to a man, the homophobes reported no reaction whatsoever to the video. Denial and self-deception were themes of the trial of Gwen's killers. Two of her assailants had had sexual relations with her in the weeks before the murder. She had had no transitional surgery and was anatomically male. Only when that became known to the wider group did the young men resort to violence. I can't be gay. I can't be gay. What is it? that induces extreme violence against, violence to the point of killing someone against people who are transgender or who are gay. The source of that violence, not always, but very often comes from adolescent males and often ones who are the least secure about their own sexuality. People who are comfortable with their own sexuality are not threatened by people of of a distinct orientation or distinct practices. Why should you be threatened? Are there no moral lines at all? I think there are. Don't hurt other people. Don't do things that other people don't want you to do. Don't judge people, lest you be judged. Forbidding these different points of view or these different existences in the world doesn't control them either. It just drives them underground. Can't we respect diversity because it exists all over the place. 
we have to respect it because it's nature. 